Welcome to St. Anne Lenten Reflection Podcast. Throughout this Lenten season, we will be praying in the form of Lexio Divina. We will be reading from the daily gospel reading and hearing a reflection from a parishioner at St. Anne. After the gospel is read, there will be a brief moment to reflect on how the Lord is speaking to you through the scripture. Today's reflection will be given by Mary Alice Portillo. Let us now prepare our hearts as we listen to the word of God. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Today's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously every day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they might be warned, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Lazarus and the rich man, two completely different characters, and yet I can find I easily identify with both of them. And I think maybe we all can. Jesus uses Lazarus to illustrate an extreme case of suffering, but it's something we all experience in life to some degree. It's been part of the human condition since the fall of man. Some of us are just a little better at hiding it than others. And whether we make the effort to grin and bear it, It's easy to feel like no one sees us when we suffer, like we're invisible in our misery. Do you know how many times the rich man and his friends walked right past Lazarus without missing a beat? I would imagine it happened almost every day. And every day, Lazarus would have been reminded what others had and he did not. Even the scraps were withheld. Yet the gospel concludes with Lazarus carried away by angels to live in the lap of luxury, a.k.a. Abraham's bosom, for all eternity. After suffering miserably during his life on earth, Lazarus is exalted to the highest heights of heaven. It's a beautiful reminder that our worldly status does not reflect our standing in God's eyes. When we suffer, God is ever-present. He sees us in our fallen state, has mercy on our hungry souls, and he is anxious to bring us into the eternal, unparalleled bliss of life at his side. But there's a flip side to Jesus' story that is equally fitting. Like it or not, we are the rich man. It's easy to forget how wealthy we are when we live in a country where capitalism has been taken to the extreme and consumerism has become a societal norm. I would say my family is comfortably middle class, but in reality, we are definitely, I mean, we're not rich. We are very rich. When I stop and think about it, 
I mean, is that really? A, we have a house, two cars, a refrigerator, and a pantry that are always full of food, furniture, beds, blankets, pillows, closets full of clothes, stuff we don't need. We even have a little fluffball whose sole purpose in his life is to be cute. And suddenly, my modest conservative lifestyle is looking pretty extravagant. This is a great place to pause and go back to Jesus' story. And it's really important to remember that God's love for Lazarus and the rich man is the same. He loves them both. We have no control over the circumstances we're born into. Some of us are born into rich families, some of us into poor families, and most of us are born somewhere in between. Lazarus wasn't carried by angels to Abraham simply because he was poor. He went to heaven because even in his suffering, he remained faithful to God. In the same way, the rich man wasn't condemned to an eternity in torment because he was rich. He suffered in the fires of hell because he refused to share the gifts he had been given. Jesus teaches us two important lessons in this story that should carry us not only through Lent, but through life. I love you and be careful. Our Lenten journey to the cross is illuminated by a God whose love for us surpasses all human understanding. He sees us in our suffering. He knows our every thought, anticipates our every need, and walks alongside us when we struggle. And because of God's great love for us, our efforts and faithfulness under the weight of the world are met with the glory of eternal life. The story also reminds us that we need to be careful and the Lenten practice of almsgiving helps us to avoid the fate of the rich man. In a world where excess is encouraged, it's easy to be so blinded by our overabundance that we don't even see the people starving at our door. Giving alms is a beautiful way to honor the gifts God has given us and helps us put our worldly wealth into proper perspective. As we journey through Lent, consider making an intentional donation to those in need. Generously giving alms magnifies the light of God's love for the world and opens our eyes to the spiritual freedom we gain through our Lenten sacrifices. Heavenly Father, soften our hearts to those in need around us. Open our eyes to the ways in which the world suffers, even in the overabundance we live in. Help us to be generous with the gifts we have been given, for every good and perfect gift comes from you. Amen. We hope you enjoyed the Lenten Reflection Podcast. The state and vision is to bring people to Jesus, form disciples, and send them to transform the world. Share this episode and invite someone to join you on the journey to Easter. To learn more about St. Anne, go to stanneparish.org. God bless.